Today, Zek centers around the new underrated planeswalker, Mu Yeah. And the biggest challenge we'll face is not making Mulan references. So let's get down to business to defeat the modern metagame. So let's talk about Mu. For three mana, her up two ability says heart creature loses flying and gets minus two minus zero. But more importantly, her minus three ability says make a four four flying token. So turn three, we play Mu, we up her to four, and the following turn we make a token and Mu stays alive. It's pretty good value. But I'm sure the comparison everyone's gonna make is to Liliana. Both Mu and Liliana are good offensively, but defensively, Liliana is much better. If we are losing, we can play Liliana and make our opponent sacrifice a creature. Mu, on the other hand, does not have that same kind of defense. Although its plus two ability is not terrible, but luckily we don't have to choose between Liliana and Mu because they're both in the deck. And in order to support Mu's minus three ability, the deck has a lot of disruption. For hand disruption, we have four Inquisitions, three Thought Seasons, and two Collective Brutalities. As for creature removal, we have three Fiddle Pushes, three Damnations, and Dead of Winter, which is most gangster. For three mana, it gives creatures minus X minus X, where X is equal to the number of basic lands we control. In order to get these basics, we have nine and fetches, including three prismatic vistas. Our other lands are not as interesting, although we do have three creeping tar pits. For value cards, we have four visions as well as four snapcasters. And for offense as well as defense, we have two bitter blossoms and also two tasikers. But the most gangster card in the deck is everyone's favorite, and that is the Scarab God. It is quite the bomb, and it does a lot of stuff. It gets stuff back from graveyard, it scries, it drains life, and when it dies, it returns to our hand. We only need one copy of it in the deck, in the same way that Azorius Control only needs one big to fairy. But now on a sideboard, we have graveyard hate, we have some Tron hate, we got some non-creature disruption with this and this. We have little creature disruption with this and this, and then disruption of activated abilities. So that is the deck. Let's get to the gameplay. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. But without further ado, here's the gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand, a lot of discarding stuff, but we'll keep it. Oh boy, and it looks like it's Tron. Thought sees. Oh wait, there's only two cards in hand. There is hope. I'm gonna sacks that. Plays another one. Next turn we can get a Lily, so there is very much hope. Inquisition. Star and Oblivion Stone. We'll take the Oblivion Stone. We also take this star. That seems really greedy. Yeah, whatever. We'll take it. And then back to our opponent. We hit a land. But then it's back to us for Liliana. Hooray. This is muy grande. They pass back. We shall fire visions. Oh, sees me. Plus Liliana. And there's the concede. What a spanking. And boom, there's the move. Which means by next turn, we'd have a 4-4 flyer. Very kinky. Going into game two. We'll dump this for this. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, no discarding. So mole. Yes, yes, this will do. The curve is quite nice. Turn one, turn two, turn three. Chromatic star. And a rejection. Nice. For now, we'll go Inquisition. <laughs> get wrecked. We'll take the stirrings and then pass back. They sack the star. Playing the map. They think they're so clever, don't they? But guess what? Take that. Boom. Come on, play the ballista. Relic. That's fine. Fine like Joe Mama. And a star. Do we counter that? That's a tough call. Yeah, let's dump our hand. Now I'll put out Liliana and send Snapcaster to Jesus. Now back to our opponent. But I am a bit nervous here at these lands because they're only missing one. But they just pass back. And look at this. Muy grande. Better blossom. Discard. Dump a land. That's odd. So they have some important card in hand, that means. Because why when they have played it and they're hoping to hit the Tron land for like a Karn or something, but it wouldn't be an O stone because if it were, they would have played it. Well, we got another choice here. Force discard, another land and pass back. They pass back again. That card in hand they're protecting must be hella worth it. It's time we find out. What? <laughs> oh, wow. That was anticlimactic. What are they doing? I guess they're just that desperate to get the last Tron land. Okay. Force discard. Swing for one. And back to them. They play land. And since they have no cards in hand, let's use the ultimate. This seems like a fair choice. I mean, fair for us, not for them. Swing for two. And back to them. I'm gonna play this star then passes back another liliana might as well play it swing for a three up it and back to them draw a card hit another land and then passes back yes there we go we shall play the moo up liliana Ooh, karn up this and swing for four back to them expedition map but we have this out still it appears the sphincter fondling is about to come full circle make the big token and swing for five back to opponent now we're never big boy because next turn we'll sort your stuff into two piles up oh, there's the concede what a one-sided match as it should be but we didn't really get to see the moo in action. That's why it's on to the next one. Opening hand, we can turn one discard, so we'll keep. Oh, and it looks like we're up against slivers. Interesting. Now we'll discard them. Oh, the Easty Siege and Hod. But we'll take that. Back to them. Another vial. And now we shall do these. Thought Seize. Taking the crowd, because eventually it's going to be a problem. And then Visions. Land on top. And back to our opponent. It looks like our opponent's dumping their creatures. Yep. I think the safer option is to go with the Damnation. Yeah. So we'll hold off on the walkers. Opponent fondles us for six, but now we'll fondle them harder. <laughs> they pull land. Back to us. We shall play Moo. And back to them. But then they pass back. Okay, let's force that card out of them. Liliana. Oh, Aether Vial. And Diffusion Sliver. Okay. But we make token. And now we pass back. They hit another land. And it's time for the fondling. Make them sack. But there's a concede. So we're going to game two. Going into game two. We're gonna bring in this stuff and get rid of this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand a tad bit too slow. So we're gonna mull. Yeah, we can keep this. Opponent starts with a vial and a moo. With a fatal push in dead of winter. We're looking pretty good. Opponent plays a sliver. Do we kill 
it. Nah, we wait. And then back for opponent. Opponent plays Gale Rider Sliver in Vials and Cloud Shredder. But guess what? It's time to die. Because here's Dead of Winter. <laughs> and opponent passes back. Damnation will play the Moo. And then pass back. And ooh, Necrotic Sliver. Hmm, we don't have Revolt active though. But good thing we have this. Make them sack. And then that. Make a token. And then pass back. What is these? This member? Oh, that dirt dirty. And then opponent passes back. We shall make them discard. They vile. It's Edge Sliver. Ooh. And they can regenerate it. Hmm. This might be kind of dumb. But we'll go with Damnation. Because Damnation prevents regeneration. And then up it. And then pass back. Opponent plays land. What a loser. And we'll try and close things out here. And then play Tassiger. And back to our opponent. And there is a concede. If they had played it out, we would have done this. Hopefully getting back Dead of Winter. Because then we could wipe for minus four. Tassiger would survive it. And we had all this other stuff going on. So overall, a pretty great match. And speaking of great, I have made new deck boxes. I think they're pretty gangster. But now, back to the gameplay. Opening hand as balls will mull. I don't know. I think we gotta mull this as well. Yeah, fine. What's these? Light of hand is a storm. We shall see. Moo, nice. And no, it's Phoenix. Look how dirty this is. Bridge from below gets banned, but like, look at this. Take the looting. Get wrecked. Back to them. They pop scour. No arc lights, and they pass back. They didn't ask. Play this. Pass back. But they do have finale, I promise. And that is a problem. We can play both faithless lootings this turn, making three spells. Yeah, they're gonna get both back. And now we're in a bit of a pickle. Hmm. We take out one of them. Yeah, I'll go for that. They swing in response. Revolt. Push. Boom. They flashback faithless looting and a vision. Oh, this is a tough call here. We have Moo and we also have Liliana. I think Moo is the better option here. Because with five cards in hand, they could probably get back the Phoenix. So instead of killing it, we'll pin it instead. And now back to our opponent. They manamorphose. Bot scour. And visions that will get them back Arc Light. And a bolt. And a lava dart. Okay. They deal four to us. Lava dart. Gut shot. Yep. So game two it is. Go one into game two. We'll dump this for this. And with that, let's go to game two. We have a surgical. Nice. That's all we need. Inquisition. Force and a gate. Spell Pierce and Visions. Wowee. Negation won't hurt us too much. Spell Pierce. That's a bit hard to play around with the surgical. We'll take the Spell Pierce. And back to our opponent. Opponent Visions. Back on our turn Tassiger. And unless we surgical, can't play it this turn. So we'll hold off on it and pass back to them. Faithless looting. Come on, Phoenix. I've never wanted to see you so badly. Oh, no Phoenix. Whatever. And a moo. They're just going to force a negation it. I really want to play it. I'll play Tassiger. And we'll play moo next turn. I want to flash it back. Faithless looting. But no arc light. All right. We shall swing for four. And then Moo and less counter. Yeah, it's too good to not be countered. Opponent ops, towers, a lot of hand, and vision. Okay, back to us. Full land, swing for four. And to maximize our options, we'll play this untapped. That way we can do this and fatal push. Opponent loots. And still no Phoenix. Love him in there. We have so many basics that it doesn't matter. Okay, let's activate this ability. Getting back to rest. And ooh, I really want to rest them. But I really, really want to play the Scarab God. All right, we'll swing for four. And we can't pass this up. I mean, it's Scarab God after all. <laughs> Hmm. But ooh, and they definitely thought it was a bigger threat. They could have killed that, but it'll just be returned to our hand. What is these? Finale of Promise. Hitting Faithless Looting and Thought Scour. Do we surgical one of those? We'll just let them have their fun. Assuming they don't have counter though. There's one arc light. Something's fishy, but we'll give it a shot. No, they just concede. That nice. Game three, no change to the sideboard. A surgical and a hand with a horrible curve. But we have surgical, so whatever. Oh my god. Play that pass back. Upon an ops one. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. Oh, slot of hand. And darks look sure. Oh my god. Upon a thought scours. If force negation in there. And they can't have too many of those. Looting. But no arc light. Now we gotta decide what we're gonna play next turn. I think Liliana's a smarter play before Moo. So our hand is so terrible. Yeah, we'll go for the Liliana. And yet another land. Right. Spell Pierce, sure. Although if we see a thing in the ice, that Liliana would have been nice for that. Or maybe they just took him out because we have Fatal Push. And Fatal Push wrecks thing in the ice. Visions. We might be walking into this, but I say Moo. Spell Pierce again, sure. Aria Flame. Yeah, that's pretty rough. But they just pass back. And another land. All right. Now I'm getting kind of worried. Visions, I, I guess duress. Just so many lands. I know we we're gonna draw that many lands. I would have been more careful with the planeswalkers. Or maybe we should have surgical the spell pierce. Save this loading. But no arc lights. Okay, duress. And now they have promised we gotta take that. But with the bolt and scour alone, it's a lot of damage to us. 3, 7, 12. What happened? It's such a weird match because like 18 cards in graveyard, no phoenix, no thing on the ice either. And we've essentially only pulled land. Not scours, anamorphos, scour, and no phoenix. But there is the match. Oh man, face palm. Why didn't I surgical extract the spell pierce? Or on the turn that we played Moo. We could have played Visions instead and waited and played around the Spell Pierce. I assume they had it. But my thinking was fine. Like if they take out the Moo, we would just have one more threat coming. But obviously we didn't. I mean, nine lands, five non-lands, and that's with a Scry too. But if they had kept the Spell Pierce that turn, then maybe they'd hit like three Phoenixes the next turn, in which case we'd have to extract. And if they stopped the extraction with the Spell Pierce, then we'd be dead. So there's like a lot of things to think about and a lot of things that could have happened. And the thing that actually happened was a statistically improbable outcome. So the moral of the story is screw statistics. Well, after that last 
match, maybe we should revisit the deck. Perhaps. Moo definitely felt viable. So at the very least, we can make another Moo deck. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the deck. And as always, I hope you have a great day.